Uh, happy Labor Day, everybody. This is uh, September the 3rd, uh, 2012. Uh, my name is Thomas Keegan. i uh, here doing this interview um, for LibertarianProgressive.com, where we're interviewing independent and third-party candidates in 2012, like the uh, individual I have on the line with me today. Um, uh, and uh, that is um, Anthony uh, Grenowitz running for the uh, 14th district in New York against uh, Representative um, uh, Maloney if she's going to run again this year. No, it's Joe Crowley. They changed the uh, they designation. Ch they changed it. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, in New York State, there was a tremendous uh, confusion and re redrawing of district lines. Okay, so who is your um, uh, competitor again? Joseph Crowley. Joseph Crowley, okay. And uh, now Anthony is a uh, uh, professor, he's uh, an author, and um, he's been involved uh, politically, and you can read the bio and, and issues and, and things like that at Vote, um, V-O-T-E, Gronowitz, G-R-O-N-O-W-I-C-Z dot info and um good to have you name on. It, the name is Grinovich, actually. Grinovich. <coughs> Grinovich. Thank you, sir. Grinovich and um uh, well, thank you, Anthony. And uh, now, w w why? Um, we, how we usually start out is asking you what motivates you, what um, drives you, what got you into this uh, campaign, this race, uh, this year specifically on um, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And um, so, I appreciate uh, your time today, uh, this evening, um, uh, this Monday evening. And uh, how are you doing today, sir? And what got you motivated to um, uh, run this year? Well, I feel that I have to run because uh, it's in my blood, in my brain. I have uh, did my dissertation at University of Pennsylvania a number of years ago on the revising the concept of Jacksonian democracy, comparison of New York City Democrats in 1844 and 1884. And I turned the first half of that dissertation into a book called Race and Class Politics in New York City Before the Civil War. Okay, I was going to ask you about that, actually, but yeah, please continue. And that sounds very interesting. If you could just tell us a little bit about that as well. Well, what I discovered analyzing in a Namier-type study, in other words, looking Namier, the great British historian, uh, looked at the uh, parliament and analyzed the representatives in Parliament, and I analyzed the, turned out to be some 5,200 Democrats in those two years. And I did a demographic analysis of their ethnicity, their ranking in the party, um, to try to trace the names, and discovered um, that the party was more working class, it's appropriate on Labor Day, in 1844 than it was in 1884. And it was also more Irish, except in the 80s after the Civil War when Tammany Hall really became strong, although it was strong also before the Civil War, but um, that the party was less Irish, but the Irish officials were more visible. But in terms of the morphology of the party, it was more Irish and working class in the 40s, which is contrary to what everybody uh, believes, but people believe in the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus as well. And <laughs> this is, you know, this is the problem. Uh, when you do primary, heavy-duty primary research that I did, uh, worked on, like, you know, statistical significance is feeding it into a computer and all that, that's what I came up. So with. what did that tell you, though? I mean, you know. Uh, well, what it told me is that the workers were shunted out of the unions, uh, out of the political process, actually engaged in, within the party structure, and relegated to unions, where they have essentially been languishing. And, of course, the unions are the weakest they've been since 1935. So I'm essentially a labor historian as well, uh, as, a, as well as a political historian. But it also and I take my cue from uh, Ralph Nader because that's when okay. I got involved in Green Party politics in 1996 when he first ran. Yeah. I ran for assembly and then I ran for mayor and then I ran against Crowley in 2010. Well, it also tells you that there can be more to meet the eye and not to you know believe everything that you read or, or to you know. You, you oh, absolutely. You just, that's why you know I'm a historian. I, I went you know 
accepted my undergraduate work at Columbia and my graduate work at University of Pennsylvania. I took it seriously. I'm not in this for the money. Right. I mean, I had opportunities in the 60s to go into banking because of, you know, obviously connections. That's what counts uh, most of all. And uh, I chose not to. I chose to uh, uh, do research. So... Yeah, are you there? Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm here, sir. Will. Yep, I, I am here. And uh, I, and speaking of Joseph Crowley, um, he was in the seventh district, I guess, last uh, cycle. And, right. And so, you know, he. One thing I noticed here. Um, here's one of the. Uh, uh, well, you can go. To, anyone can visit govtrack.us and find all the voting records. Um, right. For, and he, he voted for. The um, NDAA of 2012, uh, there's an mm -hmm. NDAA every year um, because it's a spending bill, but people kind of attach things to it, um, kind of like you see those sharks that have those little uh, attacher fish that swim onto it. Mm -hmm. Well, th they attached um, onto this one um, indefinite detention. And um, and that's not so nice. Uh, I mean, that's actually that's 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 kind of just playing around with words. Th that that's all, that's you, you know um, basically um, getting rid of the rule of law. I mean, where they can just suspension of habeas corpus, which is at the cornerstone of uh, what Churchill argued in his history, uh, the cornerstone of uh, Western um, the freedoms. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I mean, in effect, there is no habeas yeah. corpus today. Yeah, so let's get about civil liberties, the law, the rule of law, why that's important in society and confidence, and and, and then absolutely. The well, picture. that's out the window because yeah. uh, it's, it's you know it, it really started with Clinton and the Anti-Terrorism Act of 1996, and Bush pushed it forward with the Patriot Act, and then Obama, New Year's Eve, uh, signed the bill that you're referring to. Yeah, New Year's Eve, uh, kind of like, um, like like the Federal Reserve or something, you know, that's known. Well, that was so. December 23rd, 1913, yeah. Oh, okay, December 23rd. That was <laughs> the okay. Christmas, the eve of Christmas Eve. Yeah, right, right. It's, I knew it was some kind of eve. Um, uh, well, no, they just they do it because they don't want people to notice. Yeah. They pick a holiday when people are being festive and don't want to talk about politics, and then it's a done deal. Yeah, no, they're very like conscious a, of what they're doing. We're going to pass this. All right, now the party is over here, and there's free drinks, everyone. Let's ignore what I just did. Um, exactly. So uh, Joseph Crowley did vote for that. I guess he doesn't have the same uh, historical perspective that you do? No, he was a, he's a political hack. He was appointed by his predecessor on the last day to be his successor. Um, and, you know, they didn't even have, I don't think they had a primary. Whatever he is, once he's in, he's in. And... He voted for the Iraq War as well. <clears throat> He's one of the 83 um, House Democrats that voted for the war. Yeah, it's it's, it's um, well, there, there there's a record right there. And uh, now um, uh, now, so I guess you, you know, with, uh, you have ran before, right? That you have ran oh, yeah. a couple things. And um, now it isn't assembly, this, mayor, and Congress. Isn't mm -hmm. this a prime? year i mean just um you're a green party right and mm -hmm. um, you guys don't have a re is it just you against him i don't think there's a republican in here is there um, no there is a republican there is but the a republican one. doesn't do that well yeah just fyi for everyone i mean there, there also is one though um and um and so but I, I we're focusing on independent and third party candidate interviews and uh do you know anything about um you know is there any scheduling for debates and i think the republicans and uh, democrats are still doing primaries or something well i have this threshold of you know money and and percentage and all the rest of it and the only person who was able to uh, <laughs> overcome that was uh, ross perot Mm -hmm. And he, you know, put up a hundred million dollars of his own money in '92 because he lived in Texas and he was fully aware of the uh, criminal nature of the Bush uh, dynasty. Yeah, were you hoping he would Kevin win? Kevin Phillips or? also uh, detailed in gory uh, language back then uh, when he wrote a book on them. Yeah, I mean, were you, were you rooting for Perot back then, or I guess... Uh... No, I wasn't really. I mean, Perot, I mean, I had some problems with Perot, but I was impressed by his, the fact that he, in June of 2000, uh, June of 92, he was ahead of both Bush and Clinton. He was, he was. He... In California, and then his life was, his family was threatened by the Bush syndicate, and, they, and of course nobody wants to go against the Bushes because of their... Uh, intelligence secret 
police well, connections. And, mean, that's, and that was, he dropped out. Mm -hmm. But he came back in, he still got 19% of the vote, which was the best any third party candidate had done since uh, Teddy Roosevelt. That's right, that's that's right. Um, he did, I mean, even with dropping out and then coming back in, which, exactly. which is a horrible thing. Which was a scary thing for them. So in 96, when Nader first came in, they didn't um, let him in the debates. Yeah. Well, no, they didn't let him in. They almost arrested him, I think, in 2000. After Perot, like... Um, but 96 uh, is significant also because it was the lowest participation of enrolled voters in the presidential election in U.S. history, yeah. going back to the first popular election, which was held in 1824. I think it was about 48 point something percent. Wow. I mean, and the, the debate commission was set up after Pro did so well in 92. It, you're right, it did scare them so much that they said, you know, we're not going to let any more right. Republicans or Democrats, I mean, I'm independents or third-party people in the debates. Precisely. <clears throat> well, you saw what the Republicans did to uh, Ron Paul. Yeah. They shut him out. Oh, yeah. In the convention that just ended. Yeah, they, they told, I mean, they, they would have seemed stronger by you, you, you know, um, by 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 just uh, admitting, uh, you, you know, like pretending that we're we're strong enough where we don't have to try to hide all this. Instead, they seem like they're just um, uh, power hungry and uh, and willing to bend the rules to get what they want. Um, Precisely, and Perot, um, Paul has some charisma, and he's got a, a deadpan uh, response that would put these people to shame. I mean, Romney is wooden. Yeah. Makes Al Gore look charismatic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Romney and Al Gore, they kind of have that same, like, uh, yeah, that, jo that square jaw, square, you know, physique or whatever it is. I don't know. Well, uh, and, and that's what I call Obamni and, and, and Romney is um, uh, uh, the twins, you know. Um, I Obamni, mean, that's good. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, I, Obama's I, much more, much cleverer. I mean, he's really very sharp. And this had a say one thing and make you believe it, and then say another thing and make you believe it. Yeah, he is. And as I said, if Clinton could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge once, uh, Obama could sell it to you twice. Uh, so, it's like looking at where we are in history, uh, I mean, some people say it's unprecedented, others might say there's nothing new under the sun, but, um, I mean, what's your forecast? Um, I mean, I guess there's a fork in the road, right? In terms of? of okay, and here's um, two scenarios. In terms of if we do the same thing, like where there is, like, the House, you, you know, the, uh, the Congress continues to have a 10% approval rating. doesn't matter if the Democrats or Republicans win the House because two years from now it's just going to be flipped over again um, when people remembered why they didn't like the, that party um, two years later. And, and then, we, you know, it does, to me it doesn't really even matter if we get Obama or or Romney, and, um, or here's an alternate, s s s um, uh, I guess, uh, fork in the road, is that um, November 7th, the headlines say, um, uh, you know, this must be a mistake, but I guess it's breaking news. There's 50 plus independents and Democrats elected to um, uh, the emergency break that was put into the Constitution called the House of Representatives, where every two years people can elect a new Congress. It can happen all of a sudden. Um, people wake up, they, 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 they um, realize, they, they learn, they, they realize we've been going back and forth, um, especially more, um, it's been happening in more and higher and higher frequency in the last 12 years. Um, and they decide, you know what, I'm just going to select something different this time. And um, and and they do, and um, we get an unprecedented number of uh, independent and third-party candidates to the House of Representatives, where we actually can make a difference and do have a chance. Well, I don't see that happening. I see, you know, a much darker, much grimmer scenario. I mean, the, well, the, yeah, occup the Occupy movement. Yeah. The Occupy movement is very strong still. I mean, it's just about to explode in the next couple of weeks. Well, how about Occupy the House of Representatives? By well, sure. I mean, that's why we're going to have maybe, you that's know, that's why they put in the national, that's why they put in all this, because the, um, you know, they made a mis let's, let's put it this way. Well, I mean by electing representatives like you occupying the Congress. Well, you know, they can also play with the uh, votes. I mean, the most reliable well, okay, source let's of say like voting is paper ballots, and they don't want that. Well, let's the say touch like, tone, you're, you're the right. touch screen balloting can be, you know, you can manipulate the software. We've got to get rid of, of that. But let's say like 25% of it is possibly rigged. I mean, it's kind of like... It's kind of like just sending um, a, a multitude. We, we, I mean, there's 70% of this country. Well, that's what happened in Ohio. 
I mean, Robert Kennedy, somebody junior, somebody did a hell of a lot of research for him, that Rolling Stone article that appeared, I guess, in 2005 uh, about the 2004 election. I mean, it just showed the, the multiplicitous ways of the of rigging the Ohio. Well, people have got to stand outside. The, the, the media has got to be on top of it. I mean, people have got to well, put The media is corporate. Pressure. They don't They don't challenge anything. They just go along with what are their, whatever their corporate well, advertisers want. People so there's no, there's no, uh, that's why the internet is so good. Right, right, you know? right, right. The internet media, which actually a lot of uh, these shows on the internet, um, uh, w whether it's you, 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 on the left or the right, they, they have actually a lot of them more views um, than, you, you know, what we do see on the main media. I mean, they, they, they are a dinosaur. They're dying out. They, they have um, this this image that they're very popular when, when they're not. I mean, when you look at Romney's speeches, if they actually pulled the camera back a little bit, there's no one beyond, like, the second row. Um, but uh, it, it, so it's like a skeleton uh, crowd. And um, no, actually, I mean, it, it's like a uh, j just a, a flock of geese or something just flying into... Look stage like Hollywood. That's why Clint Eastwood was so perfect. For them, you know. Well, if there's oh. overwhelming majorities in some of these elections, I mean, it's, it's going to put, we, we can get, um, you, you know, maybe, like right now, there's 70% 70, 70 of every single district has an alternate party. Um, I mean, they can't get them all, and they can't rig them all right. at this point. I mean, if we can just get 50 through. But um, you can just suspend the Constitution, which de facto has already been suspended. If things get rough because the people are just fed up with they the, could the, try. the banks. They could try. You know, the big, the, big, the big elephant in the room is the $21 trillion that's offshored that was revealed by James Henry in the Guardian article in July. They're not talking about. I mean, that's the equivalent to the um, GDP of Japan and the U.S. I, I refer you to the article, Heather Stewart, business editor of the Guardian UK. $21 trillion, colon, hoard hidden from tax man by global elite. There's no, there's no problem with uh, Well, some of it we're going to have to write money. off, right? I mean, aren't we going to have to write off like about half of that at least or something? Well, no, it's all into the Cayman Islands, which is a British protectorate, and other places. And in banks, like J.P. Morgan Chase. I mean, the big guys come out on top. Uh, after all is said and done, uh, it's the richest banker in 1912 and the richest man who ever lived who uh, controlled Chase and ran Chase, David Rockefeller, the grandson. Uh, they well, tell us what will happen largest. if we go on this dark path. Um, like, let's say one well, of these... it's going to be a very serious, very bad situation. It's a global situation. They just took the money and run. And, the, 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 I, you know, I accept this notion of the 1%. It's a crude expression, but it works. So we're the 99%, and the 1% has just robbed us. Do you think it's just because it's, it's there's certain individuals, or do you think anyone that's in that position, like absolute power corrupts absolutely, and it doesn't, like it's just natural to happen? Well, I think it's a combination of factors, and certainly the two that you mentioned play into it. Yeah. Um, well, now, so it's, it's yeah, now, now let's say what Let's hear the, I mean, because there's always a poss like lots of different things we can brainstorm that could possibly happen. I mean, there's um, infinite quantum, um, y y you know, possibilities. But um, what, what would be uh, like um, a positive scenario that, like, what if we could get about 50 independent and third-party candidates? Well, that would be something, but I don't see it in the cards. I don't see us getting the percentage. And I see the Democrats and the Republicans, for instance, in New York State, control the board of elections so they can work together as they had in the state legislature have in the state legislature for years then when the democrats took over you had two democrats switch votes switch their party to republican and because you know when it when it time when the time came for them to they couldn't hide b behind the fact that they didn't control the assembly they suddenly uh, started playing all sorts of games and it was a, s a scandalous two years ago now, there are good people in government who are, like, quote-unquote, on our side, right? I mean, not every, there are people... There's who, always an exception, but the exception is not the rule. They have to float these exceptions because they're the bait to fool people to accept the uh, dominant parties. 
Well, there's people that have resigned from the State Department and protests. There's uh, uh, generals who have, like, spoken yeah, out. Yeah, but that, they're a minority. Whistleblowers. Uh, they're always a minority. Well, the majority... And Obama has persecuted more whistleblowers, many more missile whistleblowers, I think six times as many yeah. as uh, Junior Bush. Yeah, that's that's very true. And, and, and I mean, he, he's like Bush part three. Um, like his yeah, third, third term. term. That's what I said at the outset. Yeah, yeah exactly. And... Uh, uh, well, um, most people, though, are um, they're just waiting for other people to stand up. Um, and, and so majority of the people probably are, or could go one way or another. There's like probably a small amount of people that are truly like have bad motivations, just like there might be a smaller amount of people that truly have good, honest motivations. It's up. That's to, right. But so it's up to the, the people with the good motivations, which I mean, if you think about during the Revolutionary War times, for one example, I, I mean, it was a small mi mi minority that, that helped influence the tide, the books like Common Sense and things like that. Now, um, it, it, yeah, but as John Adams pointed out about the American Revolution, one third were f was for it, one third was against it, and one third was on the fence. That was his uh, summation without the statistical. Well, I think we have even more than one third nowadays actually that's for it. Um, and, and actually, I think there's more people of the caliber of like John Adams living now in the United States than there were even yeah, then. Yeah, but they can't get any media coverage and they don't have that kind of money. I mean, the exception, does, again, does not prove the rule. And that's the problem. How bad do things have to get before people start to wake up? Evidently, it's not bad well, enough. Well, th there are shows getting more popular. I mean, there is, um, you know, the Tom Hartman show. There's the Young Turks. There's Alex Jones. Um, there's right. A, and these shows get more, you know, views and listens than, like, um, you, you know, your typical, uh, you, you know, Bill O'Reilly or, or whatever, and uh, that, that tell you to shut up and give talking points, you know. Right, right. Right, right. So, I, I mean, this is, there are people who are ignoring the mainstream. I mean, besides Well, Congress, I certainly ignore it. I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. I, I'm on the Internet all the time. Yeah, I mean, Congress has a 10% approval rating. That's from the Gallup poll, August 24th. Right. But and you remember they, Mark Twain said 110 years ago, he said the only permanent Native American criminal class, the U.S. Congress. Now, that's Twain. Here's another about once every 100 or 50 or 70 years there there is a successful uprising of the people and um, and we're long overdue for that. Well, that was only when there was a trans Oh yeah, we are. Uh, there was a transformation of the society from from one that was slave-based and indentured servitude to one you know Absolutely. based on free labor. But that was a qualitative transformation from an agricultural to an industrial society. Now we're in a society now we're where we're in an information society, and isn't but information jobs are one being of those outsourced and down, and the companies are being downsized, and people are hurting in massive numbers. Sure, I mean, what's ignoring the, this? The first priority would have to be changing our foreign policy because that's where the trillions well, are that's going. That's where, that's where Paul is uh, so. Uh, they, they, the Republicans can't stand them because that's what he talks about. Yeah, I mean, that's where the majority of the money is going. That's where the, the, the majority of the, the power, the special interest, that's where the majority of, like, this police state apparatus is built around. I mean, that, right. that that's the seed. I mean, get, by affecting that, that's going to reverse the cancer right there. Well, but the problem is that, you know, we spend more on the military than the rest of the world put together, and that's unsustainable. Oh, it's totally unsustainable. So, I mean, so I mean, but now you are in there. I mean, I know you're you're also there to to, to spread the message. But I mean, if um, well, I'm there to provide an option on, on the ballot. Right. That's basically it because I'm not going to be able to compete with his whatever. Million, now let's see. Say you do get. Raised. Let's say you do get. You get in there. Let's say like instead of 50 candidates, let's say maybe we get. Ten double-digit right, independent right. and third-party candidates. We get ten. Like instead of just one Bernie Sanders there, now we have ten Bernie Sanders. Instead of a Bernie Sanders, Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, we have ten of those kind of voices. Yeah, but you know that's too. All right, so that's Bernie Sanders and Dennis Kucinich. In the '60s, we had Wayne Morris yeah. and Ernest Greening. And you go back in time, you had Norris. You know, right, right. That's not enough. The it's not enough. Right. But, but not what enough. If we also added. That's you. always the, as far as it goes. Now, what are you going to do in there when you get in there? Well, the first thing I would do is transparency. Where's the money going? And for what? You know, and I think that's that's a, for starters. And, of course, I would uh, suspend the, the student debt. Yeah, it's hard to make decisions I, I bail out if you the don't students. know what's I bail out going on. the students. 
you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't continue to. This, this strike debt business of Occupy is exploding. Well, just to follow up on the um, uh, transparencies, because, uh, I mean, that's an important thing not to just say it. it, it it's because, I mean, how can we really... And not hiding stuff at the end of bills. All these riders and all these pork bar, you know, they, you have a bill, and it, it's straightforward. If you want to add something, you have another bill. Yeah, you know, up our, and down. This is all this is one hand washes the other, and the hands are so filthy they can no longer be washed. The, the Canadian health care bill was five pages long, and ours was what, like 50,000 pages or something? Well, that's the, that's the catered to the insurance and pharmaceutical industries, yeah. which are vested interests, bloated and totally uh, unnecessary. But they're vested, and it's going to be hard to dislodge them. So I guess everything's going to have to collapse. I'm, unfortunately, I don't want to see that, but I don't really see a silver lining. I mean, no, I, no, I, 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 I wish I, for the same thing you're wishing right. for, but I just don't see it in the cards. No, I, I mean, I, I, I respect that, I mean, that realistic analysis, and I'm not saying people shouldn't be prepared for that, and, and, and like, you, you know, uh, but I'm <clears> saying we, we also shouldn't underestimate <clears> and, and, and still not, um, of, of course, like, I mean, because you wouldn't even be running if you didn't think, you know, there was some kind of a chance, right? Um, so there is. Well, a, I'm trying to build an alternative. Right. And you start, you know, it's, it's, you don't pr pr transplant an oak. You start an oak with an acorn. Now, we're on the last 60 days. You've got to spend some time I mean, this doing is, this. People really start paying more attention about now, too. I oh, mean, yeah. yeah so, Absolutely. After Labor Day. Yep, exactly. And so, so I, I, I think I, I feel something where, mm -hmm. where people are, there's something, um, we're going to have uh, more independence and third-party people than we ever have. And Well, so, absolutely. <clears throat> but we've had it in the past, but they managed to uh, crush them. Yeah, but in the past, they didn't have, like, the, uh, inf you know, people weren't as skeptical. People weren't as... Uh, well, they were skeptical, but the economy was going someplace. Now it's going no place. It's going overseas. Yeah, we're, we're at the result of what's happened when people vote the lesser of two evils for too long of a time. And exactly. this is what we get. Um, now, we, we, it just, we can learn from history, but doesn't mean it has to set a precedence either. Well, the, the thing, look... American capitalism, the first act of American capitalism was agricultural. That created jobs. The second act, industrial, created jobs. The third act, computers, takes away jobs. It's as simple as that. It's, it's part of the scientific, industrial, oh, yeah. and, technological and eventually, revolution. Um, there's going and to this be is a automation. very serious situation, exactly. Now, now here's the solution, because now we're thinking, and I, I, I like what you're, where you're going into right here, is we're looking at like a bigger issue overall instead of just all these like little details. Absolutely. Yeah, now, now here's something else, um, like here's just food for thought, because exactly what you said, we're going towards, we cannot fight technology, we don't want to fight technology, we have to compete. Yeah, we have to compete with and it. And a company would rather go to Canada, which has a five-page health care simple system right, where the right. government pays for the health care rather than here where, you know, they, they've got to pay for it. But here's the point. Here's Partially, the, anyway. Here's the point, Anthony. It, it's, it's that we're, it's, since, like, we grew up, like, in, in uh, like, you, you know, this country kind of grew up in the 50s, the 60s, where corporations would take care of you. They would pay your pension. They would uh um, Well, that's because, uh, your yeah, because, you know, but no country sacrificed so little and gained so much from the Second World War as the U.S. So it was, mm -hmm. it was really riding high off of the Second World War which is a tremendous victory. Everybody else had significantly proportionally greater. No, that's true. But casualties. the point I'm making is is that like our we're thinking in, in, in a perspective that has been built in. Um, like we're thinking constantly about how do we increase wages and uh, and compete with automation. It, it's a losing battle. We have to re totally think it. Now instead of increasing people's wages. How about decreasing people's costs? What are people's main costs? It's housing, energy, um, mortgage. I mean, it's just housing, maybe a car payment or, or an education. That's their main cost. Now, so how are you going to do that? Well, it's sustainable. I, I mean, what we can do is um, make energy, uh, like invest in energy. Um, by well, that's why I'm for solar, wind, and wave. Exactly. Solar, I mean, solar. I mean, they, listen. In the 50s, they were saying by 1974, one of the reports issued by Congress in the 50s said, by 1974, 14 million houses will be solar-powered. I mean, they, 
But the oil companies lobbied against its vested interests. Right, but that's something We got that these dynasties, Rockefeller, Gore, Cheney. Gore is oil, Occidental. People forget that. That's one of the biggest wool-over-the-eyes uh, operations. Uh, this Al Gore is an environmentalist. I mean, he's, that's where he got his money. When his father retired from the Senate in 1980, oh, yeah, I don't like uh, he was put you, on the payroll you know, of this. Occidental Petroleum. So, I mean, the whole thing. And he lost his home state. In, in in 2000 right so he did and, lose you know and he state. was well known as a polluter and a slumlord and everything else in tennessee well, i so, totally you know, agree with a you a lot there. of a to lot totally of agree. you know but but the problem is that this local stuff is never put on the national um stage and you know you can look it up online you'll see the articles written the solar uh, would pay for it so that's the main point because i can understand people not wanting to have a lot of social projects thinking that their money is going to be yeah, wasted yeah but i just said the 21 trillion dollars that is avoiding taxes i mean it's, little guys are getting audited by the irs but the, these people hire accountants to not pay taxes no no that's that's that that's, that's i mean that's so was I mean, it soros or buffett who said that his secretary pays more in taxes than he does as a percentage. So the litmus test of a program, a government program, should be that it can pay for itself, okay? That, that, that would be one. I mean, and solar would more than pay for itself. So, I mean, so that's what I'm saying is, is having a, a, a litmus test that people can be confident in because if everyone had, like, typically an extra 1000 to $2,000 a year for year uh, among year among year among year among year, like, if solar panels are built to last 30 years. They can withstand right. hail. Um, th that, that, that's about, like, 30 years times 2000 um, I, I mean, that, that's how much extra But money. it would cut into the profits of the oil companies. There's tremendous lobby against it. But, but now 95% of all U.S. businesses should be in favor of that. Besides the oil companies, like, I mean, you're thinking about Walgreens. Yeah, but they're the huge, about, big, they're the biggest companies. Exxon and Walmart are the two biggest companies. Well, Walmart should actually be in favor of this. Um, Exxon well, Walmart is, thrives on people of, on low income because after you finish paying for gas, as this weekend uh, abundantly demonstrated, and I never saw less traffic coming to the city. I was visiting my mother in Connecticut. I never saw less traffic on a Labor Day weekend in my life. So every company should benefit from this. AT and T would benefit from this. Sprint would benefit from well, this. Well, sure, but LG there's no. Would. But they all work together, and they, yeah, we're we're well, saying maybe what, they, what we're telling them is work with us, and, and then ditch Exxon. But there's no incentive for them. But there's to work a huge for us. incentive for them to work on us, for work with us, because we're the, we're the consumer, and they'll they'll be yeah. More but you, to organize consumers is is an impossible task. I mean, Ralph Nader was certainly just make the, the decision. Power just, of just that. see what Exxon happened? Is, just see as Exxon is no longer a viable partner, and see the American people having um, free energy as a huge surplus to your. Uh, yeah, but how do you get that message out, and how do you organize a party or a movement that? that I don't think uh, they've embraces really, that. Ever, ever, you know, they might just keep spreading the word. Um, you, you know, it's it's. Well, you spread the word. Well, let's see what happens. But so far, it's, it's nothing's happened. Well, things can area. happen quickly. It's kind of like the silent shopper who all of a sudden just... Oh, it's, that's true. It's that's decision. true. It's possible. It's, you know, what was going to happen? What was going to happen? Well, Occupy exploded last September. It's like a woman who decides that she no longer loves somebody. I mean, it's just going to happen just like that. I mean, without notice, um, without... Well, without the Occupy movement, the Occupy movement exploded on September 17th. It was very powerful, and it's going to be exploding this September. Uh, even though the media is not paying any attention. I'm fully aware of what goes on because New York City is my living room, my laboratory, and my life. So I make it a point to go everywhere and talk to everyone. Now, New York City is great. I've been there kind of a few times, just the energy, just the architecture, just the people, right. the spirits, I mean, the air. It, it, it's a nice place. Um, and uh, I, so, so yeah, what I'm saying, though, is let's make it, um, you know, you've heard that slogan, a November to remember. Well, this is not in the movies. This is actually the real November to remember, November 6, uh, 2012, Election Day. Right. Well, let's see what happens. But right now, I see Obama just pushing for war, too, you know, after the election. Suppose he's reelected. Well, yeah. I predict that they're going to go after Iran. It's going to be a t tremendous disaster. 
Uh, yeah, now, I mean, if that did happen, I mean, now there could be, you know, another admiral or general or two that steps down, like when they did with Cheney, um, and, and refused to, like, fire on that speedboat or whatever that was flying by. Um, and uh, it's something like that could happen. Um, I mean, perhaps um, that that would happen. I mean, that, but, but maybe um, Iran, if they saw, like, that we had elected, like, 50 people, I, I mean, would... You, you know, try to, you, you know... Well, you know, it's a phony issue, just like politics. Iraq. You know, they're not, they don't have the nuclear capability. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. one thing to have a nuclear bomb. It's another thing to be able to deliver it. People don't even think about this. You know, it's a, they don't think logically. They just brainwashed, as George Romney's father said, as, as Milt, Mitt Romney's father said about the Vietnam War. That's right. That cost him the presidential election. He was brainwashed. He said, I've been brainwashed. Well, he was absolutely right. Same thing here. This is the way people drum, 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 drum. And, and, and it's not like the people of Iran like the Iranian government. I mean, I think um, we would be helping the Iranian people um, better by not um, making it so, like, uh, the government puts pressure for that country to unite because we might possibly attack them, you know? Well, it would be a disaster for this economy because the oil prices would go to $300 a barrel. Yeah. And they're not, going to, they're not going to take this line down. And, you know, and the whole, if you look at the history of Iran, it was... Uh, BP moved in there, Anglo-Persian Oil Company, back in 1908. It became BP in 1954. And the CIA look, helped do a coup of it, too. Right. Yeah. Uh, Kermit Roosevelt yeah. engineered it in 53. So, you know, chickens are coming home to roost. That's what's happening. That's why they... But they're taking out of the hide of the average American. And this elite is, you know, all they care about is skiing and, you know, their estates and the rest of it. And... I mean, went to school with these people. They have no social conscience whatsoever. And, you know, a lot of rich well, dummies uh, what about out there. No I mean, merit. It's not a meritocracy. It's what about a know. practical argument? Do you think any of them could be enlightened with a practical argument? Yeah, that it's in again, their best there interest? would be the exception that would not prove now, the Do you rule. think they're just short-sighted or, or, or what? I mean, because, I mean, it, honestly... Well, they're scared because they're offshoring all their money, and they're hiring private security, and they're garrisoning themselves, and they're funding the police. I mean, J.P. Morgan funded New York City Police Department Foundation with four and a half million bucks last October. I mean, how, they cannot see a win-win situation at all, can they? I no, guess. they can't because they, they miscalculated. Yeah. They didn't understand that state interests transcend ideology and religion. It doesn't make any difference in the final analysis if it's Vladimir the Great who founded the Russian state or Vladimir Lenin who waged the revolution or Vladimir Putin. State interests transcend ideology and religion. They didn't get it. Uh, and they built up Islamic fundamentalism to bring down the Soviet Union. So, so what have they got? They've got Russia, they've got China, and they've got Islamic fundamentalists. Not that the three of them agree, but the point is they're all competing with the U.S. And they, they, it's not, to use Brzezinski's famous metaphor of 1980, his book, The Grand Chessboard, it's not, it's not, they don't have the pieces anymore. So they're taking it out on the American people. So it's only going to get worse. And hopefully the scenario that you outlined about the 50 progressives and one like representing just a November each to states. remember, yeah. well, you know, this would be a ideal, shot heard but around I don't the world. see it. It's, it's going to be a, a shot heard around the world. Um, and uh, now, um, uh, yeah, 51 representing each state. They don't all have to be from, like, a different state. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but just one metaphorically representing right, each state. But, you know, in some states, because... Take Oklahoma. It's impossible for a third-party candidate to get on the ballot in Oklahoma. Now, we have had battles, um, won, especially in the court systems. I mean, not, we haven't had... But Oklahoma, because in 1910, 40% of the population voted for the Socialist Party for governor. So they made sure that would never happen again. They've got the most restricted ballot access laws in the nation. So I don't see any... That's why we need to think Oklahoma. bigger. I mean, we can't just get enough where they can just slam us down next time. We've got to get um, a big oh, enough I agree. punch. I in. agree. That, that's I why agree. We, it, 50 is a good goal because, I mean, it's got to be a big enough punch to make an impact. Absolutely. And, yeah. I mean, it definitely has. It's got to move them back so we can make a second punch in 2014. And right. um, now, uh, so we can follow up with that with a left jab or left hook or whatever. So, so um, now, any points here that, that you think I I've, I've might have, um, y y you know, that might have went over my head or that might have No, you know, I think, I you know, or... we're basically on the same page, but except that my 
scenario is a bit grimmer and less Pollyannish than yours. I'm pretty Pollyannish. That's fine. I don't mind someone uh, do, doing that. I, I mean, as long as when you get there, you're, you're not going to vote for, like, uh, indefinite detention. You would vote against the Patriot Act. You would... Uh, well, of course. Yeah, but so they're, they're protecting yeah, themselves matters. because, as you know, if, I don't know if you've ever read the book that Kane and Hamilton wrote about their trials and tribulations on the commission. No. They wrote a book. No. Well, you ought to put that number one on your reading list. It's called Without... Without and what? Can you repeat precedent. that again? P okay. Without precedent. Okay. And in there, they say fog of war could explain a lot of things. It couldn't explain why we were lied to by everybody. In other words, none of the reports given by FAA or NORAD were true. Okay, so you, you mean about... And the first chapter is set up to fail. You know, Shut we should have listened fail. to some of. Um, we should have fired the people who were um, like, like the people in charge when when things went wrong, and then we should have um, promoted the people who were. Bush, look, warning Bush us. and Bush and Saud let it happen. They worked together. Because you know, Bush is in the pocket of Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia is Exxon. Oh yeah. And I, Bush is Rockefeller. It's very simple. Well, who who okay. who took over as uh, head of Buckeye Castings in 1900? from uh, Frank Rockefeller, who was the CEO, Samuel Prescott Bush. Okay. So they've been working together for years. Well, this, uh, was, a, this yeah. was allowed to happen, because Osama was killing Russians. He had, in the 80s, then he turned to kill Americans, and he went after the World Trade Center, because the World Trade Center was built by Nelson in his term of office, and the Twin Towers were nicknamed David and Nelson. And it was directed because the U.S. put troops in Saudi Arabia in the 90s after the Gulf War, and he regarded that as sacrilege, Osama did. So they went after it. Well, I mean... That's the reason. I mean, and but the Kane and Hamilton book is extremely revealing and insightful. That's why it's gotten no coverage. Actually, I will check that out. So that sounds... Um very interesting, and uh, it, it's like a uh, detective on the case where, um, you sure. know, I just want to know the facts, and uh, and I'm going to keep pursuing them. Well, to that's get the justice. one. That's the book to read. I mean, what yeah. what kind of commission or investigative committee? Uh, you don't give it enough money. You don't give it enough time, and it was set up to fail. That was the first chapter of the book. Yeah. Set up to fail. I didn't. I didn't make that. Hamilton was head of the. Uh, House Intelligence Committee. Kane was, uh, you know, respected. Uh, he was designated by Bush to head up the Committee of Inquiry. There are only so after the many families talked about six for six unanswered. months were lobbying yeah. for something. Yeah, there's many, many unanswered. I mean, there is more unanswered things um, there than 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 almost But that's anything. the key one because that was used as a pretext for endless war, the suspension of habeas corpus yeah. and all the rest of the stuff, Patriot Act and now this uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Simple. I mean that's so get just to the isn't roots. getting the kind of coverage. People don't read. Craig Unger, Unger said in, in a forum once that people, you know, would actually, go in books. there there has been a poll um, on this whether, um, like, fifty percent. Uh, I mean, I mean, whether the uh, what percentage of people believe that they have the full story behind nine eleven and uh, and um, and actually, there's a majority that believe they they don't. Well, it's the same thing with the Kennedy assassination. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Yeah. So what? There's no political will to do anything about it. But the, the, that's but been around for. There is an admission now. of that populace. I mean, so someone's got to stand, and other people will follow. And uh, yeah, right. I mean, it, it, I mean, those polls are true. It, it's it's nothing that's uh, really argued against, um, and it's accepted by um, y y you know establishment. But people are easily diverted. Yeah. Distracted. It's it's distraction, distracted, fear, sure. and apathy. Yeah. Exactly. Distraction, fear, and apathy. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it, there comes to a point where it just, you, you know, you, you soak in that fear and, and you just marinate in it after a while, and, and, and then you just you just start to fight back. I mean, that, that's just what's got to happen. I mean, you've got to marinate it in, in, in it for a little while before you, you just fight back. It'll be your natural um, uh, right. tendency. And um, so hopefully, um, hopefully. Um, I mean, so how can I find out about you and your group and, and what's a website and all the rest of it? Well, thank you, Anthony. It's, uh, yeah, it 
LibertarianProgressive.com, where you'll find... Um, LibertarianProgressive.com, all one word. All one word, where you'll find uh, you'll find the, some of the 50-plus candidates who are going to be elected uh, November 6, 2012. Okay, cool. Although there's many more, um, there's thousands. I mean, just visit the Libertarian Party, LP.org. Just visit the Green Party, GP.org. Look oh, no, I know about candidates. the Green I'm a Green. I'm a Green. Oh, I know, I mean, but I'm just saying... LibertarianProgressive.com, I'll definitely yeah. look it up. Uh, well, I'm just saying to, to everyone listening out there, it, it's it's um, just look up the candidates list on, on both of those parties, Absolutely. and you'll find there's hundreds, if not thousands, of people that um, that we can help propel uh, to um, occupy the uh, House of Representatives. I mean, um, it w- it w- they, they, that is the emergency break. That's why they made it every two years. Let's uh, use this emergency break before the car drives off. Um, the cliff, and um, so, uh, well, Anthony, it was a pleasure. Um, if there's anything else I forgot, please uh, let us know. And um, it, it's well. Let me ask you this: Here's something I always ask people: Is um, uh, do you, what what's some of the most interesting to you, and why? Um, uh, 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 historical figures that um, that that uh, you, you know you've been thinking about lately. Well, the the recent one, of obviously, is uh, Ralph Nader. Yeah. He had a tremendous impact. Oh yeah, yeah. Ralph Nader definitely. Um, he's. Uh, I actually. Um, you, you know, and that goes with the spirit of what I'm saying. I mean, I voted in the past for a libertarian, uh, Harry Brown. I voted in the past for Ralph Nader as president. I mean, to me, the, these there are certain issues that are bigger than than some of the other issues. Exactly. Um, and, and, and right now, um, you know, there's urgency in, in sales. I mean, there's urgency. There's comparing, and then there's rapport, and, and we can easily compare you to the status quo. We need to have that urgency, and oh, um, absolutely, and, and and the rapport. I mean, I, I mean, when we're talking about politics, I, I don't really care if someone's a doomsdayer or not, just as long as they're going to vote the right way. To be quite honest, and well, you've um, got to build an alternative that represents yeah. the people's interests. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's exactly, and, and just the website, it, it's just there. I mean, I'm not any organization, really, except because right. there's already the Libertarian Party, there's already the Green Party, there's already the ACLU, so there's already... LibertarianProgressive.com. Absolutely. And, um, okay, terrific. Right. I'll look it up right now. Well, it's been a pleasure, um, and Same your interview here. will be on there, um, and, you know, within 24 hours. I'll say goodbye to you right after I finish uh, this um, re- interview recording here, Anthony. And, sure. Uh, thank you very much for your time today, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Keegan. 14th Keegan. Congressional District, Bronx, Queens. Um, there you have Eastern it. Eastern Bronx, Western Queens. Excellent. Thanks, sir. Thank you.